define your ideal candidate qualifications. What are the key attributes of a top tier candidate? And get, get clarity. Like this should be on a position description. <laughs> The experience, the product knowledge, the industry knowledge, the education, the track record, the behavioral style, the cultural fit. Like put some work into what's our definition of an ideal candidate. It's not too different from an ideal customer profile, yep. but you're just doing it. it you know, if, if I interview a candidate and, and I'm like doing the Snoopy dance afterwards because I think they're awesome, um, what are the attributes that they should have? And, you know, so that just takes a little work, a little whiteboarding, a little back and forth with, with a few leaders. Um, but let's get clear on the target before we go out and try to hit the target. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, that don't, like, it, it's exactly like finding the right customer. Yeah, it, it really is. It's, yeah. it's no different. The only, and the other correlation is the, another thing on the list here is be prepared to sell top candidates on why they should want to work at your company. Remember, the interview is a two-way street. Um, and top candidates typically have options because every smart manager wants to hire the best. Yep. Um, so you have to be ready to tell that candidate, hey, you should come at our work at our company for these reasons. And maybe it's hey, we have compelling competitive advantages. We have five-star customer support. We have a product team, a product dev team that consistently releases high value features. You know, what it, maybe we, 50% of your pipeline is um, inbound leads. Let's yeah. come up with reasons why. It, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking A. No, no, it's, it's, it's the same thing, like. Uh... Yeah. But for me, I was I'm thinking of a of a friend of mine who was like hassled into interviewing with a company. They kept bugging him, and then he went and met with the leader there. And the first question the leader said is, "Why should we hire you?" And my like my friend is like, "Well, you asked me to come here. You've been hassling me. Why should I accept a job for with you?" Yeah. And his response was, "Well, we're this company." We don't need to sell you on our position. So obviously you didn't take the, the, the job. <laughs> like the, the the meeting ended pretty quickly. But yeah, like some for some reason, some companies think that they don't have to sell. And it wasn't like a famous company. It wasn't a Cisco or a Slack or a Salesforce. It was an unknown company who, you know, it's just it doesn't have a good reputation to begin with. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. Well, that's one other thing in, in this category as, as you get to selection of candidates, um, another best practices that I have here is including a mock presentation role play yep. in the process. My, my biggest question for that is now that they've identified the criteria they want, I think they should have a system of identifying those in a person. And I find that harder than actually like, yeah, I, I want someone who has all these qualities, but now when I'm interviewing, how do I figure out if they do have these qualities? Has anyone mentioned that or talked about that? If there's a system or anything? Yeah, I, I would, um, something that, that we've used with clients a, a lot is um, that first interview, make it a 15 or 20 minute conversation, just an introductory conversation. And be clear on the opening, we're just having an introductory conversation with uh, a number of candidates. And it gives you a chance to get a sense of who we are and who you are, and we'll go from there. So 15, 20 minute phone screen, where you cover some of the most important criteria. Part of it, it maybe just is, you know, do they have the phone presence? Do they have an executive presence? But start with the phone screen, and then if they pass the phone screen, as soon as possible. That's the other thing. You got to move fast, man, because top performers are never on the street for very long. And for some reason, it seems like in recent years, interview processes have extended, not shortened. Yeah. But after the 15, 20-minute phone screen, then schedule a one-hour interview. 
and you're just prioritizing in the interview, what do we want to cover? Because if, if we're going to get to a no, let's get to a no fast. And if we're going to move them forward, let's finish the one hour interview and literally on conclusion of the interview, schedule the next step. Scoop them off the street because otherwise your competitors are going to. It's like you're describing a sales call. I guess I am. But from what I've seen, uh, we're going to talk about, we can talk about interviews for hours. They tend to, after each interview, they have to go back to HR or the recruiter and ask them to send an email setting, asking for a few more dates and times to come back with another interview. And that just takes three days, four days, five days. Uh, you know, just like take ownership and do it. You know, I don't know why, why maybe it's a, like a process thing that they have to stick to, but I would have rather for this situation, I'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. Yeah, I would agree. And, and I guess that just has to be addressed at the senior management level, right? When we're recruiting, we need to be streamlined in order to get the top talent. I, I've so. said this on so many of like, I've been ranting about this actual problem for a long time on this podcast. And my suggestion has been schedule all your interviews one shot before they even have the first interview and then cancel if you don't want to move forward versus having the first call, scheduling the next call, having the second call, scheduling the third call, panel interview, because especially with sales engineering, it's six or seven or eight interviews these days. So that's a great idea. And I'm adding it to the list.